What's up everybody, Kaiser Slice in there. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Welcome back to another video. And this is my WrestleMania 38 reactions. We have night one and night two here. Um, I also quickly want to apologize for no uploads yesterday, which was Sunday. I know I did say for WrestleMania weekend, I was going to do double uploads. Uh, but my laptop charger broke. Um, so I wasn't able to upload anything. But I picked up a new one today. So to make up for it. There will be double uploads for the rest of this week. So every day this week, up until Sunday, there will be double uploads. And then just back to one a week, or one a day from Monday. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I just want to get that out there. Um, so yeah, uh, we have two nights of WrestleMania to get into. Let's not waste any time. Let's just head straight into it. Uh, the Usos, Jimmy and Jay Uso, defended the SmackDown Tag Team Championships against Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. Of course, the Usos did retain. This was an okay matchup. Um, I thought, like, uh, Shinsuke's entrance with Boogs playing him at Mania, the crowd were into it. That was good. Uh, the match itself um, was good. Uh, unfortunately, it looked like Rick Boogs picked up an injury. I've been seeing online he tore his quad or something. Uh, basically, what the spot was, he had one to use. I believe it was Jay. So he had up on his shoulders for a... Uh, Samoan drop kind of position of Fairman's carry. Uh, Jimmy Uso kind of like well, and he, I can't remember if he tried to pick up Jimmy Uso or if Jimmy Uso like kind of jumped on his back, kind of trying to block it. Uh, and I think from there, Brooks towards quad because he went down and kind of just rolled out of the ring and was kind of down on the outside for the rest of the match. Um, there's an I liked a spot where uh, towards the end it led to the finish. Um, where one of the users on the apron pulled Nakamura's hair back, uh, got caught with a super kick, then by the other so I believe Jimmy may have pulled him back and Jay hit the super kick. I can't really remember. Um, and then that led to the finish, of course, where the Usos successfully retained the SmackDown Tag Team Championship in an okay match. It wasn't anything special, anything to really write home about. Maybe that's because of Boogs' injury, where kind of things had to change. But I think Usos retaining were the right call and it was an okay matchup to kick off WrestleMania. Drew McIntyre defeated Happy Corbin. Um not really to write home about here. We've seen Drew and Corbin have a million matchups, I feel. Um over literally since like Drew's came back. I feel like he's had a feud with Corbin nearly once a year. <laughs> I just feel like I've seen this match a lot. I didn't really care for this match. Drew kind of predictably got to win. I didn't see Corbin getting the win here over Drew Armenia, even though since he became Happy Corbin and doing that character, Drew, uh, Corbin apparently has been on the feed. Um, after the match, uh, Madcap Musk, of course, the winner of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which took place on SmackDown. Uh, he's kind of standing on the apron, Drew gets the sword and just like literally cuts the ropes in half to kind of intimidate Moss. Uh, Miz and Logan Ball defeated Ray and Dominic Mysterio. Um, I'm not like I'm not the biggest look. I'm not like I don't really care about Logan Paul. I'm not a fan of him, but I also don't really like not one of the haters of Logan Paul. Like, he's like I'm indifferent. Uh, but he was impressive in this match. I thought he uh, held his own in this match against Ray and Dominic. Um, of course, him and the Miz picking up the win here after the match. The Miz hits Logan with the uh, skull crushing finale, and uh, yeah. So I don't know if this is a Miz face turn or if they're like trying to turn Logan face and kind of have him go against Miz. But I feel like it's a Miz face turn though because Logan had a lot of heat. A lot of people were booing Logan Paul uh, and you know the Miz was kind of getting a face reaction after doing it. So yeah very interested to see where that leads. Um, You know Logan Paul he just has that natural charisma. He has that uh, you know as I was saying like people hated him. People were booing him. Uh, he has heat, and you know he had his own. So maybe if they do continue on with him, maybe maybe there could be something there. Uh, Bianca defeated Becky Lynch to we to become the new Raw Women's Champion. A uh, solid match up here. Um, probably one of the better matches on the card, but I can't really remember anything too special about it either. Uh, Becky had her own special entrance. I believe she came out in it. Was it a card? Uh, Bianca also had a special entrance with like a band playing her team music. Um and yeah, a solid match up here. Um yeah, I um 
not really memorable two days later trying to think back to it. Um, but yeah, it was a okay matchup. I can't really think of anything bad about it either. Uh, Seth Rollins, his open challenge was answered, of course, by he uh, he comes out. He was in the ring, and then all you hear is the lights go out. Wrestling has more than one royal family, and then something's uh, adrenaline in my soul. Something, something, Cody Rhodes answered Seth Rollins' challenge. And he's got his AW gimmick, you know, it's not dashing Cody Rhodes, it's not smoke and mirrors Cody Rhodes, it's the American Nightmare, they call him the American Nightmare, he's full on American Nightmare here. He even had his Cody entrance where he comes up through the stage. Um, and yeah, he gets the win over Seth, probably my pick for match of the night on night one, I thought this was a solid matchup. Cody looks good in his return, of course gets a big win over Seth. And uh, yeah, the finish, Cody hits him with two crossroads, picks him up, does the elbows, third crossroad, and a one, two, three. Very interested to see where Cody goes from here, um, what the plans are for Cody. Um, you know, it's like this is this is kind of huge. This is how I imagine a lot of people during the Monday Night Wars feel. Uh, Cody Rhodes was one of the founding members of AEW, so now to see him go, like we've seen people, you know, go from WWE to AW like Daniel Bryan, Moxley, um, you know, Adam Cole, just to name a few. But now it's the other way. Now it's a star from AW going to WWE. So now things are kind of heated up a bit. I'm very interested and intrigued to see what happens with Cody Rhodes and kind of where they go with him next. Um, do they continue this on with Seth? Do they maybe have him chase for the world title? Do they maybe go with someone else like I know in AJ Styles or in Edge or uh, I don't know the Kevin Owens maybe. Uh, so yeah, very interested to see uh, where kind of they go with Rhodes after this. Yeah, uh, Charlotte Flair retained over Ronda Rousey. Again, not really special. I'm struggling kind of to think back to this match if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, uh, I remember Charlotte had or er, Charlotte tapped out, but the referee was down. Ronda hit, then hits Piper's pit. Uh, referee counts the tree buff. Then notices Flair had the foot on the ropes. Referee kind of distracted. Um, Charlotte hits natural selection and retains. Uh, and yeah, I feel like with how this match ended, you know, with Charlotte happening, with her technically getting a tree count, but then referee reversing the decision because he's seen the foot on the rope. I feel like there's much more to come with Charlotte and Ronda. Uh, then. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Kevin Owens. And with how they were hyping this up, I was like, this has to be a match. I was like, there's no way this isn't a match. And uh, then when Stone Cold came out, he had the jean shorts on. I was like, yeah, I'm, yeah, this is a match. But, um, uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, Stone Cold comes out, you know, basically him and Kevin Owens back and forth. Turns into a Noah's Bard match. And it was okay. It was your typical Stone Cold Steve Austin Attitude Era match where he's just kind of walking around the arena brawling, you know, weapons usage. Uh, there's a funny spot where the boat, Austin, he enters on the ATV. Uh, like Kevin Owens gets on a train escape, Austin like cuts him off and they like drive up the ramp on it. Um, so uh, yeah, I, you know, first uh, Stone Cold match for the first time in 20 years. You know, it, it wasn't bad. It was okay. It was good. Um, like, I feel like Steve didn't, like, disappoint you, you know. And, and uh, yeah, it was good seeing Stone Cold again because what wrestling fan doesn't love Stone Cold? Steve Austin gets the win with the stunner, of course. You know, goes to drink a beer. Yeah, I remember uh, stunner Byron Saxton. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's the end of night one. Ending days, happy days with Stone Cold on top in 2022. Like, what is this? Uh... We'll be getting back to more of that, uh, what what year is this type of stuff, in a bit. And me saying that isn't necessarily complaining either. Um, night 2 started off with, again, one of the matches I was kind of looking forward to. Uh, RK Broad defended the uh, uh, Tag Team Championships against the Street Profits. Uh, actually, before I get into this, Triple H made his entrance on Night 2, basically said thank you to fans and left his boots in the ring. 
it was good to see Triple H get one more like just it was good to see Triple H get that one moment where he can uh, you know just thank the fans and say goodbye to the fans as a ring in competitor and you know hearing you know time to play the game seeing Triple H coming out spitting the water again at least, he got, at least we got to see that one more time as fans. Of course, I'm sure, kind of like how we see Austin come back every now and again for appearances, we'll definitely be seeing more Triple H. Like, I feel like that's not the last time we'll be seeing Triple H on screen. But, you know, he's now that he's officially retired from entering stuff, it was just good to see him get that one moment to say uh, goodbye. Uh, so, first match, Raw Tag Team Championship match, RK Bro defended against Street Profits and the Alpha Academy. Very, very enjoyable match. I loved this match. Disappointed the uh, Alpha Academy lost. Shoosh. Uh, I love the Alpha Academy. I love Chad Gable. I love it. So I was kind of hoping they'd get the win and get a bit of a WrestleMania moment. But uh, now nah, the RK Bro retained. A uh, lot of good spots. You know, Montez dive over the post to the floor. Everyone on the floor. Gable moonsault down onto everyone on the floor. Finish this match was perfect. Uh, Montez Ford was on like the top rope. Uh, Riddle kind of like springboards up. RKO off the top, Chad Gable then and the other corner goes for Moonsault, gets caught in RKO by Orton, 1, 2, 3, RK Bro retain, after the match, Street Profits uh, offer, you know, RK Bro a solo cup, like, let's have a drink to celebrate, but before they do, to see Gable Stevenson, of course, newly signed to the Wii, uh, sitting ringside, they invite him into the ring, they go to have a drink with him, Chad Gable cuts him off, and uh, Gable Stevenson hits a beautiful, Beautiful German, or belly to belly, sorry, onto Chad Gable. It looked so clean. I, a lot of that probably is on Gable selling it, Ovid. But, uh, yeah, that was such a clean, good looking uh, German, or belly to belly. I keep saying German suplex, it was a belly to belly. Um, and, yeah, I, f I feel like Gable Stevenson is someone that I maybe could have a lot of potential. But, first, we kind of have to see him in the ring a bit more. But, if he's throwing people around like that every week, he might have a fan in me. Uh, Bobby Lashley defeated almost uh, kind of a not match. Uh, it's kind of what you'd expect between Lashley and almost. Uh, Lashley hit a couple of spears and got the win. Then, my personal favorite match between both nights. My favorite match of uh, both nights at WrestleMania. This was everything I wanted this to be. It was exactly what I wanted. Johnny Knoxville defeated Sami Zayn. I said in my predictions, I just wanted this to be. Jack Asket after Jack Asket, and it was, you know, you had Wee Man getting involved, slamming uh, Sami Zayn, you had Chris Pontius doing the party boy stuff, uh, um, yeah, yeah, you know, you had the the giant hand slap thing, you had um, tasers, uh, Sami took a bump onto like a table with mouse traps on it from the top rope onto the floor, and then you know John Knoxville brings out a big giant mouse trap, traps Sami Zayn in it. It almost doesn't work the mechanics for some reason didn't like really set it off straight away but you know Johnny Knoxville kind of being a pro with like doing stunts like and kind of using props like that kind of knew how to fix it and he got it to work in the end so he saved it and um yeah I, I, I loved this match I'm a big jackass fan I of course I'm a big Sami Zayn fan so seeing this it, they pulled it off it was what I wanted I just wanted a lot of jackass stunts and I got that and it was entertaining everyone loved it and the crowd were very into it you know, Wee Man got one of the biggest pops of the night. Um, and yeah, I, I I enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun. Like, if you like Jackass, you'll probably like this match. Uh, and yeah, even in defeat, I feel like even losing to a celebrity, like, I don't feel like Sami Zayn, like, his value has been hurt with, by that. And like, you know, if it's Sami Zayn's character, you know, he's always going on about the like, conspiracy theories against him. We can just say everyone got involved, like, it wasn't fair. And, you know, it works for Sami Zayn taking a fall here. Um, at 10, Sasha Banks and Naomi defeated Queen Zelina Car and Carmella, Rhea and Liv Morgan, and Natalia and Shayna Baszler to become the new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. Uh, I can't really remember a lot from this match, if I'm being honest. I felt really bad for them, though, having to follow that Knoxville and Sami match, because that was so good. I just felt like... Uh, I needed like a bit of a breather, so I kind of was not really fully paying attention to this match. Um, but yeah, Sasha and Naomi, new Raw or new women's tag team champions. Actually, I maybe have lied. Then we had Edge versus AJ Styles. 
I loved this match again. This was a great match. I really, 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 really liked this match. You, you know, you'd expect AJ and Edge to deliver, and they certainly did. Um, Edge's entrance again, um, his new theme, the, like coming up through the fire, it looked awesome. Um, AJ kind of got cut on his way out to the ring, he was bleeding already. Um, and yeah, finishing this match, Damien Priest comes up at ringside, kind of distracts AJ Styles as he goes for the phenomenal form. AJ then springs up, of course, with distraction. Edge is up, catches him with a spirit, one, two, three, and Damien Priest and Edge kind of align, kind of starting. You know, there's rumors of Edge with his own kind of version of the brood. I feel like adding Damien Priest to that, Damien's a good fit, and I feel like putting Priest with Edge. You know, Priest has had runs with the US title, but I feel like putting him with Edge could kind of help. Getting, getting that like missing thing that Priest needs to get to that main event level in the future, of course. Um, and yeah, I really like this match, and I feel like the direction they're going with Edge, this kind of like darker side with is like new version of the Brood, can lead to some uh, good stuff. Uh, Seamus and Rich Holland defeated uh, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston of the New Day in one minute forty seconds. Uh, I feel bad for these guys. It was cut from night one. Uh, they get given like less than two minutes on night two. Yeah, you know, Woods and Kingston had a good tribute. They were like coming out in gear inspired like Biggie's like singlet, and I believe it was the color scheme of when he won the WWE Championship. And uh, yeah, uh, Sheamus and Holland got the win. Um, not really anything else to really say here. Um. I'm try yeah, I'm trying to like think of what else I can say here, but there's nothing uh really coming. But uh, like again, like they get less than two minutes and then right after this they do the Hall of Fame thing again. Like they did it they did this on night one, they do it every year at WrestleMania where they bring out you know the class of the Hall of Fame and everything. But they did it on night one, they did it again, you know, and you got Undertaker doing his entrance to that like that took up like five minutes. Could you not just Cut that and give these guys that time because they've already done that night one. I guess maybe they wanted in case people only did night two, and I want they wanted them to, to give them the opportunity to see it. But I don't know. I feel like I would have liked to seen Seamus Holland and New Day get a bit more time instead of doing the Hall of Fame thing two days in a row. Uh, Pat McAfee defeated Austin Theory. I I like Pat McAfee impresses every time he sets in steps out in the ring. He's a natural. You know, every time he has a match, whether it's War Games, whether it's Adam Cole, I feel like everyone is always blown away by Pat McAfee. He just has that charisma. You know, they gave him a Seven Nation Army as well as his team music. So, you know, for the whole match, the whole match, uh, the arena was just going, oh, dude, like singing along. Dude, 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 dude. You know, like that was going for the whole match. Like, And if you were watching, you would think Pat McAfee is one of the most over people in the company, if not the most over with how like that reaction he's got, you know, he had like the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders coming out with his entrance. Uh, Vince McMahon, of course, was at ringside with Austin Theory. Uh, Pat gets the win over Theory. Uh, and then as he's kind of like celebrating, you know, he, he's kind of getting in Mr. McMahon's face. Mr. McMahon kind of is going back and forth with him. And then Mr. McMahon decides, you know what, I'm going to step in the ring. Takes his suit off. He has his vest on. Referee comes running in. And we get Pac McAfee versus Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Yes, that is right. Mr. McMahon had a wrestling match in 2022. And he actually beat Pac McAfee. Um, uh, the finish was uh, Vince punted a ball into the midsection of McAfee. And that's how he got the three count. You know, then Vince and Austin Fury are kind of like celebrating in the ring. And then the glass shatters. Down comes good old Stone Cold Steve Austin. Opening another can of whoop ass on day two. Stunner on Austin Theory, which was a beautiful stunner, Sally. He like jumped so high into the air, it looked beautiful. And then we go from one of the best looking stunner cells to one of the worst. But it wouldn't be Vince McMahon taking a stunner if it didn't look like shit. If, let's be honest, what Vince McMahon stunner actually looked good. I can't think of any, but um, yeah, he, of course, Austin stuns McMahon. Austin stuns McMahon at WrestleMania in 2022. Again, what year is this? Uh, like, it's a good little nostalgic throwback, but like, if you had told me 
We're going to get Vince McMahon st getting stunned by wrestling. We're going to see Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestle. And we're going to see Vince Mc Mr. McMahon wrestle. And then we're going to see Mr. McMahon take a stunner by Stone Cold at WrestleMania. I would have been like, what year? We is this 1999? But... Uh, yeah, I, I, like it was enjoyable. It was a good moment. Uh, Austin shares shares a beer with McAfee, of course. If you share a beer with Austin, you're taking a stunner. And Pat takes a good. Pat Pat sold a stunner well as well. Um, and there was a kind of a nice shot as Austin's walking up the ramp. They cut back to McAfee on the floor, and he's just chugging the beer on the floor. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, fun little moment there for um. Then Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar uh, for winner takes all. You will acknowledge the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, the Tribal Chief, and still the head of the table, Roman Reigns. Uh, I kind of thought this was an okay match. I thought they, you know, started off hot, going for spears and F5 straight away, German suplexes, Superman punches. You know, they were going all out from the bell. But then the finish, it was kind of flat. The fin like, um, it's kind of just a flat finish there wasn't really anything special about it but i have seen pictures where it looks like roman reigns did injure his arm uh, whether that is true or not um maybe that um explains for a bit of a flat finish but uh yeah i thought the core of the match at itself kind of the nice uh, like big powerful moves going straight for the finish from the bell i thought yeah i kind of enjoyed it you know it's it's, it's kind of like uh, every big Brock Lesnar match nowadays. I feel like this is that. Um, but uh, yeah, Roman Reigns retains. Again, I think that is the right call. When and who dethrones Roman Reigns is going to be a big moment. Because Roman's had that belt for over 500 days now. He's probably going to get close to two years as champion. So very interested to see how that plays out. And um, yeah. Um, overall... I thought night one was just okay. I won't say it was bad, but I won't say it was uh, anything really blown away. Like maybe watch Seth and Cody, and maybe just watch Austin just because it's Stone Cold Steve Austin. Everything else, uh, not really that stands out um, for me. Um, in terms of night two, though, I thought night two was fantastic. I really would recommend watching night two. Night two is one of the best WrestleManias in the last couple of years. Um, and yeah, I feel like overall of when Clue and Bot Nights together, it's a very good WrestleMania. A very, very enjoyable WrestleMania. Definitely would recommend watching it. Uh, night, I, like as I said, Night 2 definitely very, carries a lot of that, in my opinion. But, you know, Night 1 did have its moments like uh, Cody's return, uh, Austin wrestling as well. So there, there was stuff on Night 1 that I would say, like, go and watch. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section below your prediction or your reactions to WrestleMania. Maybe if I decide, to, I'm I'm like tired, like I'm tired from staying up till like five a.m. the past two nights to watch WrestleMania. So I'm not saying this is a guarantee, but maybe, maybe, maybe I'm if I stay up for Raw tonight, I might do a review for the post WrestleMania Raw. Again, that is not a guarantee. That is a we'll see how I'm how tired I am, but. Uh, yeah, that is it for this video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.